Hello and welcome to another Facts and Dimensions Dataset Spotlight. In this one I'm going to discuss coronavirus. I'm on my 25th video and I can't believe I didn't actually do this one yet, even though it's our biggest. Um, this data goes back to December 2019. It's still getting new data coming in every single week. 119 million rows of data. Hugely useful data set. Um, this data is coming in was coming in every day for quite a while as a lot of you people watching this video will know um, the upside of all of that work that we've all done from a statistician's point of view is that it's a tremendous treasure trove of data to help us understand the effects of coronavirus and how we dealt with it uh, and the effects of how we dealt with it so and all the and the other thing is that all the countries in the world have recorded this sort of data and we've only loaded the uk data we have loaded worldwide data in a few instances which i'll cover um but we'll start loading other countries data sets as and when customers ask us because what an immensely useful um detailed data set that is because the whole world suffered from the same illness but we all dealt with it differently and there's an awful lot to learn from this anyway sticking with uh, the UK and our, our needs in the NHS. I'm going to just uh, briefly go over what sort of data we have. So, a um, couple of really useful ones. Apple and Google brought out uh, a data set every day and then every week showing the amount of dis the change in travel distance that people were making on average by effectively uh, using you know when when they're tracking phones and how far how far they're moving because they're obviously having to monitor them to maintain uh, data and telephone access, um, and then doing sort of amalgamating that data to get um, averages. So that so there's nothing uh, to tell one person from another. It's very much at sort of city and state level, but that is still incredibly detailed. And this is not just I've got the US showing here. That just happens to be the first one that popped up at the start. This is the whole world. Very, very useful. And Google, who basically have the other half of all the phone users, including me, um, did the same thing. So you've got here the uh, countries and regions, and again, um, these different percentages from the baseline, that's like where they started from. Uh, very detailed again, all the whole world. Really useful, not just for coronavirus, but, you know, interesting anyway. Um, we've got this one, cases and deaths worldwide. Um, that that comes from the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. Very, very decent data set. So here you've got the counts of um, cases and deaths um, by each country and when. Uh, again, huge data set. Um, we've also got the cases worldwide, and that comes from comes from from ECDC as well. Very another very very useful data set. Uh, CQC, that's the Care Quality Commission. They're doing deaths in care homes. Um, obviously, that's useful. And we've got daily confirmed cases, um, excess deaths. So that's quite handy. So you can compare deaths by what you would expect in a, in quotes, normal year. Um, Gov UK. This is, these are from the, um, the government UK uh, dashboard. I'll just bring that up so we can see what that is. It's uh, this one here, the Gov UK coronavirus website really amazing website they've done a brilliant job they were uploading uploading data to this every single day um it's now weekly but for a couple of years it was every day even christmas day which was completely mad because i don't think i i, I agree that data analysts do have an important role to play but i don't think it's that important frankly um what else do we have learning disability deaths that's uh data by for people with learning disabilities oh nhs 111 is a really good one now with this one, they've actually, every day, they were reporting numbers of patients that were reporting the kinds of um, symptoms that could be predicting coronavirus. And what I'd expect uh, people using this data to do is to see if um, 
see how close the relationship between potential coronavirus patients and actual coronavirus patients. You know, if this goes up, then does the numbers actually going into hospital a week later go up? That kind of thing. Um, I'm not going to go through all of it because it's way too much, but you've got hospital admissions by all kinds of things here. Um, uh, oh yeah, you've got COVID absences. That was a newish one. So this is by hospital p patients, uh, sorry, staff absent because of COVID. Um, we did think about putting that in the NHS workforce schema, but you know, either way. Um, hospital summary, that's all kinds of stuff. Numbers of beds, um, staffing data. That's a very handy one because you've got numbers of staff absent. Well, let's do a quick uh, distinct on that actually. So you can see the metric names. Um, well, actually you just got those two metrics. And you've got the total deaths in hospital, all by different things, by ethnicity and gender, pre-existing condition. And then you've got all these vaccinations data sets. Now what's really interesting is you'd want to see that, because you, you've got the vaccinations by different types of vaccination, you know, the spring booster and all the rest of it. I wonder if there's any way of sort of proving the, um, I can't think of the correct word, but proving how well the vaccinations helped to reduce infections. I've had my vaccinations because um, I believe that that's absolutely the right thing to do, scientifically proven. But you've got a whole load of data here to back that up as well. NISRA, that's data from the Northern Ireland um, data sets. NRS, that's data from the Scottish uh, data sets. ONS, Organisation of Statistics, there's a whole bunch of um, stats that they were doing as well. Infection survey, I don't know if anyone remembers getting an infection survey through the post, uh, but if they did, then this is the results of those infection surveys. Massive amount of um, measures to go through and have a look at. Uh, I realised in the previous video about child protection, I actually went through every measure, but that, vi that video, despite my efforts, went on for absolutely ages. So I think the best thing to do is you need to get a free trial of our service and have a look yourselves because it's absolutely massive uh the standard rates that 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 was only going on for a while they stopped doing that for after a while so i'm not sure how useful that is an oximeter count that that didn't last very long either so probably not that useful either um and oh yeah and vaccination sites so this is just where where you can go to get vaccinated and it's it's got history so you can tell when the place opened effectively so uh, yeah, coronavirus, huge amount of data, 119 million rows of data, still adding up with more data. Um, uh, you can have a whale of a time with that. Thanks.